We have to have a recession. Recession. An effective recession. Recession remains the big concern. This is for the aches and pain. There's a toxic cocktail of bad news swirling around. Inflation, interest rate rises, post-pandemic disruption, a curve pointing the wrong way. Oh yes, and a war with a nuclear superpower. This is for the stomach. Here at Capital.com, we've examined data from the past seven recessions, discovered the investments that did a little better than others, and found the stocks that really got moving. Even when times are tough, there are always stocks that will do well. I would just say that they're going to be harder to find. We'll show you what happened to oil, gold, consumer staples and key energy sectors during past recessions and put it all together to present what could be key considerations for trading in 2022. But before we get to the data, what's Capital.com's chief market strategist, David Jones's view on investing during a recession? Why don't you just keep calm? I think you should just calm down. The thing we need to remember about financial markets, they are always forward looking. It turns out it's not all doom and gloom. For a start, markets don't always fall during recessions. The S&P 500, which tracks the performance of the 500 largest publicly listed companies in the US, rose a median 6% during these three major recessions. Markets are looking ahead and thinking, well, Times are tough now, but it looks like in six months' time, the worst will be behind economies. So investors factor that in and start to rise. The big stock market crash of 2007 means the index fell by a median of 1% across all seven recessions, but losses weren't guaranteed. Here at Capital.com, we produce regular videos on a whole host of different markets, like, for example, our recent explainer video on ETFs, exchange traded funds. You can watch that one by clicking here. With all this talk of a coming recession, we crunched the data to find the sectors that didn't behave as you might have expected them to once the financial storm clouds arrived. Recessions are like snowflakes. Each one is unique. Look it up if you don't believe us. So what's special about 2022? The world is recovering from a global shutdown and pandemic disrupted supply chains, causing demand to outpace supply. That caused the rate of inflation to rise. Okay, cool. This is Victoria Scholar, an analyst who's also keeping an eye on any indicators of a recession. When the global economy started to reopen, they were faced with bottlenecks and teething problems getting back up to speed. On top of that, we've seen huge fiscal stimulus programs from governments around the world like Joe Biden, as well as here in the UK. That has also created surging demand and has added to that global imbalance between supply and demand. The US annual rate of inflation began 2022 rising at its fastest rate for 40 years. Central bankers tried to cool the markets by doing this. Today the FOMC raised its policy interest rate by a half percentage point. And even the threat of interest rate rises can scare the markets. We've had a decade or more of really low interest rates. If the cost of borrowing starts to increase, then perhaps some companies will decide Actually, I don't think we can afford to expand at the same rate as before. We can't borrow that level of money. This is terrible, terrible. Then a big financial alarm went off. The US yield curve inverted on March 29th. An inverted yield curve is when short-term yields are rising and longer-term yields are falling and it could be a predictor of recession as the Fed deals with overheating in the near term. When it happens, investors assume bad news is coming down the track. It can look like this, this or even this. The yield curve has consistently predicted recessions over the past 45 years. So that's the bad news. But what happens to those sectors when the arrows start pointing the wrong way? 
All right, we're learning things today. I'm having so much fun, you know what I mean? It's shiny, you can wear it with anything. It's been fashionable since it was discovered about 5,000 years ago. And gold is the one big commodity that rose across the last seven recessions, making a profit of 8%. Traditionally, over the decades, gold has been viewed as a safe haven. So somewhere stable to stash your cash when you're worried about what's going on in other areas of financial markets. In fact, gold's price has only failed to increase twice. In tough times, investors flock to gold. It's seen as a hedge or an alternative to troubled markets. In March 2022, almost $12 billion flowed into gold exchange traded funds. At the onset of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we saw investors flock to gold amid that turmoil as a way to try and protect themselves from all of the uncertainty that was going on in the world and that was reverberating across stock markets. <laughs> When recessions hit, central banks tend to get loose. They lower interest rates, they print money, and that helps the price of gold. We see more money being printed and the value of something like the dollar effectively be diluted, then assets that are quoted against the US dollar, such as gold, would normally be expected to do well. So when a recession hits, is there a good time to gravitate to gold? Remember that yield curve? Here's what happened to the price of gold after it inverted. The average return increased steadily every quarter, increasing by more than a third after two years. However, if there isn't a recessionary rush to gold and governments don't step in to stimulate their economies, investors who take a long position on gold could still make significant losses. Going long occurs when investors buy assets and hold on to them for the long term, believing their prices will rise. During downturns, the price of gold tends to move in the opposite direction to oil. The price of oil can be a good barometer for what's going on economically in the world. At first, US oil looked like a safe recessionary option. From 1973 to 75, global oil prices increased by a staggering 159%. But prices were skewed by Arab oil producers imposing an oil embargo on the US for their support of Israel during the Yom Kippur War. Ted Heath's government faced a drastic oil crisis sparked by the Arab-Israeli conflict. Since 1981, the price of US oil has sunk in every recession. During a recession, we might see that there is less demand for goods and services, less plane travel, less manufacturing, and less demand for equipment that's powered by oil and other sources of energy. So when economic times are tough and there's an economic slowdown, you might typically see less demand for oil, and that will push the price lower. Individual oil stocks have struggled too. BP's stock price has seen significant median falls over the course of the past five recessions. So are recessions therefore a good time to go short on oil? Shorting is a technique used by some traders during recessions when they think a financial instrument is about to fall in value. It means selling an asset at a given price without owning it and buying it back later at a lower price. Going short on oil during recessions has been profitable in the past. But if there's a geopolitical conflict or an oil crisis, that position could backfire. You can watch our explainer on oil price volatility by clicking on the box. What about the wider energy sector? In 2022, it went a little crazy, and that's because of this man and what happened on February 24th. As Russian forces pushed into Ukraine, the US announced a ban on Russian oil, natural gas and coal. Russia is the largest exporter of oil and natural gas and coal to the EU, for example, and the Ukraine as well is also a key commodity exporter to the world. 
The war has really threatened the availability of a key global supply source and really exacerbated those imbalances that we've seen between demand and supply already, with former sharply outweighing the latter. In the first quarter of 2022, while the S&P 500 fell slightly, the S&P Energy Index started ratcheting up. But energy commodities can be unstable during recessions. During the past three downturns, energy was the worst performing sector. Consumer staples are the products we use all day, every day. If you want to eat, drink, clean your house, wear makeup, smoke, have a beer, you're using consumer staples. We don't need to buy a new 70 inch LCD TV, but we do still need food every day. But that doesn't mean that staples are recession proof. Over the past three recessions, they've made a median loss of 5%. But how does that figure compare with other sectors? Consumer staples perform far better than utilities, financials or energy. While people may cut back on life's little luxuries, they still need to buy the essential everyday items. And that's why we don't see often the same sort of swings in the stock price of consumer staples companies that we might do for those in other sectors. Three staple stocks in particular made remarkable recessionary returns. Walmart's stock price went up in five of the last seven recessions. Conagra Brands went up 30% and Kroger 33%. Does this mean 2022 is retail's time to shine? Perhaps not, and that's because of soaring inflation. Walmart's stock price fell 11% in a single day in May, while Target fell 25%. Inflation means high wages and high fuel costs, and that means lower profits for big retailers, making returns unpredictable for the retail sector. 2022 might feel like an uncertain place, but perhaps this is a decent rule of thumb. While a recession is broadly correlated with the stock market, it's more nuanced than just saying all stocks go up or all stocks go down. And whatever the unknowns, the next downturn will mean pitfalls as well as opportunities for investors. Thanks for watching. Our recent video on short selling and what to consider for your own trading when markets are falling is something that may also be of interest. You can watch that by clicking in the box. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to stay alerted to both our regular weekly chart analysis video on lots of different markets and the future explainer videos that we'll be doing on the big financial topics.